on the no, inter internal engagement. Aren't we moving yes. around yes, here? Yes, yes, internal. As I have mentioned, due to the financial crunch, the people who are related to the sector could not cope up with the uh, uh, available resources for going to uh, the investment of inputs. Okay, but this is uh, you are more you are more talking on the on the best type of uh, scanning. You are looking at how things outside of your organization is affecting your work, which is very is a very good analysis, it's something that is absolutely necessary. But I think that you here you oversaw the, the opportunity to actually look at what is actually not working in your organization. For example, you have all those challenges that are out there in the, your in the environment that you work on. What is that your organization is not doing well so that this can be addressed? You need to look really yes, at the staff. I got the point. I got the point. The, the weakness, internal weaknesses, we do not have any administrative or political skills or power to get materialize the things which suits uh, our sector, which favors our uh, production, our sector. So uh, the lack of the administrative, political or the social strength or power so that we can get materialize the things which are favorable and which give a good opportunity for producing the yields, the produce of the egg sector. Okay, um, Steve, I think that there are lots of good uh, elements to that, but I think it's, uh, um, you, you're still hovering in the, in the some external elements of it, because you mentioned the social, the, 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 I think that you need no, to... Right, the, the last point I have last yeah. point, so the, due to the uh, reluctance of some individuals, due to the reluctance of some individuals who are reluctant to adopt those individuals are internal or external? Internal. internal. So it's your staff. It's the staff of your organization. It's not a staff, but it's a more team of the organization. Okay, so let's take over the stakeholders. So they are elected to after and after the new members of the department. Okay, so let's take over the stakeholders. So they are elected to after and after the new members of the department. Okay, so let's take over the stakeholders. So they are elected to after and after the new members of the department. Okay, so let's take over the stakeholders. So they are elected to after and after the new members of the department. Okay, so let's take over the stakeholders. So they are elected to after and after the new members of the department. On the one hand, okay. one can yeah, maximize the yield, on the other can pay the good price. Okay. We, we can move to another one, because I think that the model is a lot of fun. Okay, so you are outreach, these types of things, and I think they're affected. So our strengths are, we are, we are working for the past five years now. Uh, I think our strengths as an incubator are our outreach and communication strategy that we have, because we conduct outreach seminars all over Baluchistan. Our team physically travels there. Another strength that we think we have is our curriculum. Uh, the curriculum that we have put in place uh, based on the learnings of our five years uh, iteration is our strength. Uh, and we have contextualized it into the uh, in, in, into the province of Baluchistan also, according to the needs and demands of the people of Baluchistan. Uh, another strength that we think we have is our trainers and facilitators. Again, uh, since we are working in this ecosystem for the past five years, our trainers are well worth their international exposure also, and they have their local knowledge also. That's our strength. The team, uh, we have been successful. We have been able to retain the founding team. And now, so our team is there in technical capacity for the past five years. So we have all that knowledge uh, base existing in, in, in our team, that is our strength. Those are good, those are good strengths. Yeah. And, and I like what you just said, so you explained very briefly. Yeah. Is this, mm. sorry. <coughs> so I'd like to be brief and crisp. So for the... Brief, brief, but it's useful because the small analysis, like the pestle are much, and other ones are longer, but this one is sort of like, you've got to write more like bullet points. Right. So you talked about your career. Yeah, career another career. thing is that we have the first and only incubator so far in the region, so that's our strength. That's our strength. And our brand image, so NIC is a brand, so it's a brand image. 
So now I come to the, to the weaknesses. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we are still lacking in, invest in creating investment investors pool. Our startups don't get many investments, so I think we are lacking there. We need to have our own investors pool. Uh, another uh, area of improvement that or weakness we have is uh, that we lack mentors who can provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring to the startups because our startups are very diverse. We need to have people engaged from every sector so that they provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring to our startups. Uh, and we are not monetizing our services right now. We are not generating the from the training that we provide. It's all for free. I think that is also a weakness. Now I come to the opportunity. Can I ask a question? If you're not monetizing your services, do you have a funding shortfall? Or, no. do you have, or do you have secure funding long term? Uh, we have secure funding for now, but in the longer run, I think it's not a good strategy. Okay. Opportunities, uh, I think based on the, especially I realized this after the COVID pandemic, I think we can uh, launch an online incubation program now, uh, because we're still, we still, we cannot, everyone cannot come to Quetta and attend this program. We need to, have an online incubation program, so that's, I think, an opportunity for us. Uh, since we have curriculum and everything in place, so that is very easy for us, we can do it. Appor another opportunity is uh, that we can use our brand image to, uh, to make potential partnerships with international Sir, incubators. Sir, our DVM doctors at our uh, and organization. Hmm? Yeah. 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 And the uh, technical committee. Uh, uh, since Pakistan is attracting a lot of okay. investment, foreign okay. investment in the startup ecosystem, so I think that is also an opportunity for startups to be to those international investors. This way, we are doing this because we take 5% equity in every startup. Get a funding round, it is an opportunity for us. Now I come to the uh, I see uh, that there are more incubators being set up in Balistan now, so far we the first generally. So, which means that there will be more competition for funding. So, maybe our funding will be uh, shortened or spread to other people, you know. And another thing that I see is the long-term sustainability of this, uh, our uh, incubator because we are not monetizing our services. So in the longer run, maybe three years, three to five years down the road, we will face some sustainability. But you said that we get 5% equity yeah. in each, uh, you know, fundraising yeah, done by the enterprise. Yeah, but, but not many people have uh, raised investment. They are not up to that level, you know. Okay. Which, I mean, the 5% equity is not, Tangible so far. Okay. <coughs> Once they go through Series A round funding or Series B funding round, then uh, we can take that equity, not from the other round. So in the longer run, there will be some security. So these are the two areas. So I think so, this is a good job because I think you were able to understand what was internal and what was external, and you were able to tighten them. And so, yes, but also this gentleman here did a lot of thinking. So, and there's a thing there that, that you might want to turn and go, okay. you know, and you have a, you say, due to this, think about when you say due to um, reluctance of individuals, if they're internal, that is a, that's a weakness. But if it's a, if it's a reluctance of people external to you, then that is a threat. So I think, I think you're doing the thinking, just need to, to shorten it and compartmentalize it a little bit. And we had a situation here where we had some, um, some really clear strengths and opportunities and, and weaknesses, etc. but some of them were in the wrong place. And one of them was that um, they put a, a strength, I don't know if you get this right, a strength was that there was a new SME Act. Um, but it's not a strength, it's an opportunity. Yeah. And, and so we moved it and I think it was better, and then they had a weakness of, as the, the implementation of that act was very difficult in certain areas, and it had to be changed in different areas. And you had that as your weakness, not your weakness, but it's a threat. So do you see how like things that, that you control are your, are your strengths and weaknesses? The things that you cannot control are the opportunities and the 
Fritz. Um, I liked how you talked about your thinking about your brand. That's a great asset. So often the things about the, your strengths are your assets, like your people, your knowledge assets, your curriculum, um, your brand visibility. They are really good strengths to have. But people often can fall into the weaknesses if you have staff that you that are not sufficiently skilled and you cannot afford to train them. If you're carrying a lot of vacancies, that's a weakness. I think for virtually every organization we work with, funding stability is, is, is a weakness. And that's often caused by the threat of competition and lack of funds externally. So do you see how the, the, the four quadrants work together, but they're not the same? Um, and sometimes what you'll find is that a threat can become an opportunity by thinking about it differently. I think that it also uh, one point that I, I like is the fact that uh, you acknowledge the fact that you cannot provide the one-to-one -one mentoring to enterprises. Mm -hmm. This is something that you acknowledge that it actually influences, I mean it shapes your strategic pillars because now you know in this moment that you cannot do that because of your lack of people, resources, knowledge, skills, etc. So you, for the moment you need to focus on your, you know, on, on services that are more off the shelves that you can provide to a larger group of enterprises, but you cannot go one by one, for example. This is where you start, so this shapes your current, your current portfolio. But if you look, for example, and we're gonna talk uh, shortly about the, the afternoon about the horizon planning, maybe what you can do is to, is to focus on what is actually providing you your, your, your bread and butter today, your, your actual core uh, elements of your, of your service portfolio, but then in the future start maybe Piloting some mentoring, uh, mentoring exercises, and, and so that you can develop that in the future according to funding, according to you know your how your 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 uh, fundraising strategy is going, etc. So it's uh, it's uh, I think that SWOT analysis also helps doing this type of reasoning. What I can do now, what can I do in the medium term, what I should do be doing in the long term. You know, so it's um, it's uh, I think it provides lots of uh, lots of good. Uh, so how was that exercise for you? Did, did that help you um, sort your ideas out? Did it help you uh, do some thinking? Was it useful? Yes. Yeah? Yes. It's a good thing to do as a brainstorm. So you do it by yourself, but when you do it with other other people in your team or your organization, or even people outside your organization, it's really useful. Just remember, internal and external. Because otherwise it gets it gets quite muddled, and often I see a, a, a swap and it's, it's not done. Our is effect, the positive and negative Yes, the positive and the negative, but and what affects that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, doing the the assessment that Andrea showed you earlier will also help you understand your strengths and weaknesses. But there are there are other things that you know that, that are important. But I think you did a good job. And you all did a good job, and I should be very, very happy that you know there's a good way to start, and it's a good way to start a conversation. And don't be afraid to be, you know, totally honest with yourselves. You know, if you know something is a weakness, you need to admit the weakness, because you can't fix something unless you say unless you see it there. Okay, and, and part of the part of the the, the, the journey to, to improving is understanding what you need to improve. Yes. So, so that, that's why it's, it's, it's a, it can be a challenging exercise. Um, unfortunately, when Andre and I do, do these things, we often find when we do benchmarking because the benchmarking is you know, quite an intensive process when we, when we do it um, you know, face to face. Often the, the, the weaknesses look like a long list. It doesn't take much to change that list for a short one, does it? You know, simple things they can do. So I want to talk a little bit more about. Um, Excuse me, one thing. Yes, please. I, one thing I uh, you should guide me. Like me this this uh, uh, did did this thing are the constant or not constant? Because these are changeable. We can change it. Yes. Of course. This, yeah. This is not like a political situation that yeah. you cannot change. Mm -hmm. So when we prepare a program for our study, so maybe after two three months. We, we may change this one because in, in during the program this also became a change. So this is not a constant thing which we prepare. 
Well, look, what this does is it helps you decide what you need to do to, to move forward. So what you would do is then, if, if it's really a big important thing, it would be in your strategy, and you'd be measuring it with, with your indicators in your strategy too. But you, so just a second, you can do this several times, yeah, maybe two or three times a year, not too often. But it's worth doing every so often, just to, just, just to check on yourselves. So it's a good point. I think SAWAT is, is the fundamental part of the strategic plan. If you are not doing a SAWAT in your respective uh, organization or the company, you are not following the proper of the preparation of the uh, strategic plan. But this, this informs it. This no, uh, sometimes maybe the weakness becomes the strength. The your weaknesses, goes can, your weaknesses can become your strengths. Yeah, just yes. And and your your threats can become your opportunities. Weakness, yeah. Yes. So I think the basically is the rethinking process, and this exercise are so given us uh, to way forward. For example, when I mentioned the weaknesses my organization, and the one weakness is the basically less funding. So then I think, why, what are the reasons of the less of funding? So I identify two or three. Basically, the, because the now donor have a, some formalities that you should be registered in Charity Act, which is new act of the provincial act, and you should be have to MOU with the economics of your uh, economics of your division. So this is the basically opportunity for us that now we will go, go to the, uh, the, the, the year and some is our lacking of our documents. I have no any uh, no any audit report or since one year and I we not replicate our board member who leaves to country. So these are the basically major things, weaknesses. So we give us the opportunity that you will uh, discuss that and it, 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 I mentioned the way forward for your organization. You, you know, you've raised a really important point and you talked about um, going for funding and, and knowing that if your funding is shortfall then that makes you think about how do you go for funding. So let me tell you a little secret. If you have a good clear strategy, that becomes a strength. If you are going to donors or sponsors for funding and you take with them, with you, a good strategy, that becomes a very good negotiating tool to get support. Wow. If you go and have your hand out, say, give me money, give me money, I'm gonna do lots of good things, they'll say, prove it. And you go, well, here's our strategy, and we've thought about it, and this is what we're putting in place. It puts you in a far stronger position with donors if you have a strategy, and I, I have seen this in so many countries, so remember how important that is. So it's a good point you raised. Do you have a comment? I have a question. I have a question? Okay, I'll do my best. like Pakistan. Sorry, can we, can we just, um, sorry. In a country like Pakistan, where uncertainty prevails in all the fields. Sorry, in a country like uh, Pakistan and... In a country like Pakistan, where uncertainty, particularly in the economic <coughs> and the social sector, it prevails there. Political situation is also there. How frequently okay, do you the recommend preparing the strategic development plan yearly, quarterly, for three the years? Similarly, a strategic development plan, uh, including Bustle and SWOT analysis. Okay, so normally a strategy is a long term document. So it's formed by your thinking long term. When you look at the the guests and so forth, you're looking into the future already. So a strategy normally spans between three to five years. But what you should be doing every year is checking that strategy to say, does this strategy still make sense for us? And you might go, actually, mostly, but there are some things that have changed. So what you can do is a strategy refresh, where you keep most of the strategy as it is, but there might be a few things that you have to change or tweak. So, but the strategy is a living document. It's not something that you produce and it just goes in the cup and say, oh, look, there's our strategy. <laughs> the strategy is something you need to live with because you will be monitoring it with the, with the KPIs, with the implement, implementation tools that, that, that we're going to show you. So, but don't change the strategy all the time. Don't do this exercise all the time. These, you know, these things don't change that often. And it's not it's not constructive because once you've got your strategy, you need to work on implementing it. But 
it's wise to check maybe you know every few months is it still on track but don't redo it unless there's a really good reason to redo it if you've got a good strategy you just probably need to tweak it but please check it what i what, what you also need to do is start your next strategy before the last the, the one ends so many times i'm talking to people and they go oh yes we're going to do our new strategy we're going to do it oh it's already finished no you should be have a strategy we we'll be ready to move straight into the next one so it depends how long it takes you to develop the strategy but you would want to start the strategy development a few months before your current strategy ends that's good management don't wait for it to finish and then oh now we have to do our strategy no too late too late can we go to the next slide so this one I was going to tell you something. I was just, while Andrea was talking, I was looking up some strategies that I've seen from other organisations, and they passed them to me. And I was in Eswatini last year. Do you, do you know Eswatini, the country? No. Okay. Have you heard of a country called Swaziland? Yes. Okay. So they changed their name to Eswatini. No, that's wrong. The king changed the name to Eswatini. The rest of the country still calls itself Swaziland, by the way. So it's a tiny country between Mozambique and South Africa. It's tiny. I mean, every one of your provinces is bigger than this country. Yeah, even cities, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think I think Karachi is bigger than, than East Timor. Absolutely. Yeah. But I was looking at a, a, a draft strategy sent to me by an organization called the Woman, Woman Farmer Foundation. It's the last slide. The Woman Farmer Foundation is an organization that developed itself to help women farmers and young farmers throughout the country. And it's, it's, it's developed with no money, it's on a shoestring. <coughs> but I was, I was reading it just before. And what they've done is a really, really good job in terms of understanding the environmental process. They had a good environmental scan. They had a detailed pestle. They had a detailed spot. It was like, gosh, this is, this is great. And then they came to their, their four strategic objectives and then the plan stopped. So all it was was context. So context is really important, but it's not the strategy. It's the, it's the place on which you put the strategy. So you need to understand the context, but the strategy is what you're going to do. So they got the balance not quite right. They did a really good job of it, until that point. But I still want to say it's really important to have context because too many too many conversations are about the what and the how, but the why needs to be there. And the why is your context. So I'm not saying that you should have, like this organization did, 13 out of 20 pages on context. In fact, I would argue that you do not put your spot or your pestle into the strategy. All you need to do is summarize them. And that can be summarized in the introduction to the strategy. And so in terms of the context for the country and what we see happening in the next five years or the duration of the strategy, we see that these are going to be the main things that impact what we do. And as a result of that, this is why we're going to choose these strategic pillars. It's just simply that. So this work that you've been doing is important but it's not your strategy. It's what informs your strategy. And even though I really love these, this Women Farmer Foundation, I have to talk to them about the fact that, you know, they haven't got a strategy yet. They've only got the context. Yeah, but, you know, I know that they will work. I'll tell you one thing that they do. I loved it. In their, in their strengths, they have a competition. It's the only woman farmer competition that I know of. So. All women farmers in East Eswatini or Swaziland can compete to be the best woman farmer. And the visibility that this creates, because these, these Africans are very competitive. I don't know how competitive you are culturally, but this country, they're very competitive. And you know, they have like thousands of women competing. And the prize is, you know, support and mentoring and seeds or whatever for that woman farmer. And then she goes and talks to other communities about it which is a really, really nice idea. So I wanted to share it with you, because sometimes you hear what other countries do and you think, you know, that's nice. Maybe we can look at that ourselves. So context is really important. 
but it's not the only thing. So after, after lunch, we're going to talk about the real stuff that's in your strategy. But until you understand all of this, it's really hard to get there. It's like the missing piece. Because I've seen strategies that have a lot of information, but they don't still say why. So just a little bit on the why. Okay, so, so we you have the integration focus more on what and how? You, you need, yes, but you need to have the why before you get there. It needs to be clear about why you're doing it. What is the context? The SWOT and pistol is the why? What they're telling you, yes. The SWOT and the pistol, <coughs> and also your, your first statements also become part of the why. Yeah. So don't ignore the why, but don't make your entire strategy the why. It's just, it's, you just have to have it. Just, you have to have it so people know what you're talking about. But then, what we do this afternoon and afterwards, that's, that's your actual strategy. That's what you have to measure. You can't measure the why. Yes. Okay? But you summarize what you've learned about yourselves and learned about your environment through all these materials and the stuff that we've been doing. Does that, is that, is that clear? Yes. Okay. So I think it's time to go for lunch. Yeah. What do you think? Penny, do you want to uh, just share with them uh, the C